In the time of the ancient Egyptians, we communicated via hieroglyphics. We made connections with each other using pictures as words. And we've almost come full circle. Today we communicate in our text messages using emojis. But these pictures don't quite convey the level of technical sophistication that we need them to, to talk about all the great things we're doing in manufacturing, in research, in the universities. We as engineers and scientists still need to be proficient in our technical communication, in our technical writing. But what does it mean to be a t proficient technical writer? You need to step away from the keyboard to make some improvements in your technical writing. You need to make a human connection. It is knowing how you approach that project and fitting that with what your audience needs, matching those pieces together. I often time approach project like that manufacturing operator. What do I need to do when I sit down at that machine? Do I need to put on safety equipment? Do I need to start the machine? Do I need to get some materials? Do I need to get some tooling? What do I need to do first, second, third, and fourth? And I can fill in those steps, and then I can fill in the background information of material information, equipment information. And for what I do, writing operating procedures, that works for what my audience needs. But it doesn't work for all my audience needs. I have a master's degree, and when I was writing papers in that master's program, my professors had different requirements. They had different needs. I had to adjust. They would have paper requirements that you know, would maybe need to be a paper published at a conference. And oftentimes I find when I'm working on a project, I have multiple audiences and all of those pieces have to fit together like an assembly. I have operators out in the field who will need a document that's also needed by multiple departments in a company that's also gonna be needed as a regulator comes in and will audit that document to make sure that it matches regulations. And so I have to make sure that all of those different audiences match up and then I'm matching all of their needs as well. And that comes with the next connection that you make, and that's letting your audience know you and getting that feedback on your writing. It's asking your clients for feedback. Did this work for you? It's asking your coworker or your peer or your colleague, hey, take a look at my writing. Take a look at my document. Is there anything that I need to improve? Can you understand what I'm trying to say? So ask for that feedback. Maybe we get negative feedback or we get some constructive criticism, that's where we have an opportunity to actually improve our skills. I had been writing for a while and I had been getting some great feedback from my clients, from my coworkers. They had all been positive feedback. But I sat down with my manager and he said, Jennifer, the boss, he's not liking your reports. I wasn't expecting any uh, feedback like this since I had been receiving positive feedback. So I asked, hey, well, what didn't you like about these reports? My manager didn't know the specifics. I got up the courage to call the boss and say, hey, I heard you weren't happy with these reports. You know, what was wrong with them? He said, Jennifer, well, you've got a very stream of consciousness style of writing. You're just kind of doing a brain dump of information on the page and giving it to me. That kind of stream of consciousness style of writing is great for creative writing that I enjoy, but not great for the boss's report. And so I learned that I had this bias and I learned that I hadn't asked up front what he wanted in his format. And so he was able to tell me how he wanted his information formatted. And I was able to not only apply that to his reports, I was able to apply what I had learned to my client's reports and ask them, hey, you don't have a specified format that you want your reports in. How would you like that? Maybe they knew, maybe they didn't know, and if they didn't know, I was able to provide them with a draft or provide them with some samples and get that information and also be aware of that style bias that I had and not give that to them as well. And so I continued to have great feedback from my clients because I was aware of that and asked them up front what they wanted. And I, in the next time of my performance review, got great feedback from my boss. And that's how I improved my technical writing by making those connections, learning about those biases that I had, learning about my strengths and weaknesses, and asking my audience what they wanted. Thank you.